Hi, welcome to another training session with Computer Tutoring. This time we're going to have a look at grouping by values within Power BI. And uh, this was a problem that was mentioned or asked um, by one of our clients. And, uh, and it's true that we have group by within Power BI. But say you wanted to write a formula that would do this. Well, I much rummaged around, came up with this solution. It might not be the best solution, but it's a nice formula, which means that we don't have to uh, sort of muck about with the grouping by, especially if somebody's not that familiar with Power BI and sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly. So one thing we're going to do here is we have uh, variants. So we can see in this list here, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see. So we've got the various variants here. Uh, and basically what we want to know is how many are less than 100%. How many are, oops, I can zoom in again. How many are less than 100% here? How many are less than between minus 100 and minus 10%? How many are between minus 10 and almost zero? How many are zero and the reverse? How many are from zero to 10% and over 10% here? So what I've done is I've created this little table here, typed in these details and this banding or this table we can use in many, many different types of Power BI applications. Uh, so what we're going to do is we need to bring the data into Excel and then I'll show you what we need to do with it. So let's just open up Power BI. Okie dokie. There we go. So Power BI is just opening on the desktop. There's a little thing saying I need to download the latest version, but I'm not going to bother with that one. Just close all of this here like so. Brilliant. So what I need to do now is I just need to get my data. So I'm going to go to get data. And I'm going to go to Excel and I'll provide this for you as well. And it's percentage variance. That's the, the name of the charts there. And here's my two tables that I've created, one called TBL bands and one called TBL projects. In fact, if I just swap back to my Excel spreadsheet here, if I click onto the table and on the design tab, you can see in the top left hand corner is where I go to name my table. So there's TBL bands there. If I click on the other one. You can see up here that's TBL projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut down the Excel spreadsheet, which should swap back to Power BI. I'm going to then tick these two. So you can see I've got those two there ready ticked, ready to go. And then I'm going to click and load. So that will load all of my data. Now, it's interesting to note that we won't have a relationship with this data. Um, in fact, if we click on our relationships window here, we'll see our two uh, bands and, and uh, our projects but there's no need for a relationship with the function that we're going to use. And that is because we're going to use the calculate function. Now, this isn't an in-depth discussion of the calculate function and how it will work, but um, uh, it's worthwhile doing so. If you need to, then please book a DAX course with us. More than uh, welcome to do that. So let's go into our data view. And I'm interested in projects here. There's variance. I'm going to go to the modeling tab here at the top. So uh, if you just click on this modeling tab, if I get that right there, brilliant. Okay, and then after clicking on the modeling tab, we're going to click on the new column button. So if you click on the new column button, and then I we are going to write a bit of DAX at the top. So in the world of DAX, this is called banding. Um, so we want to group by value as well. So when we say group by value uh, within um, Excel and things you want to know how many are between or how many values are between a certain amount so you can create grouping. We just call this one banding here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to call this one band at the top uh, and then click on to the right here. All right, and so I'm just going to write some of my function in here uh, and then what I'll do is I'll zoom in and then explain a bit of it uh, as we're going along. So the first thing we're going to do is use the calculate function. Now the first argument in the calculate function is expecting a table of values. That's just the nature of the calculate function. So we just can't type in TBL um, bands into this function. It, it won't work. It's looking for a particular function. So I'm going to type in values. So values is a nice function. It converts any field into a table. And it also has a nice little um, bonus of making or returning a unique value, a distinct value. So we've got values there. So now we can go TBL bands. And what we're interested in is the band there. That's good. So it's going to bring back a unique value of the band. So how does it know what it's going to bring back? Well, this is where we have the filter. So we're going to filter TBL bands. Um, and then that's going to be by uh, TBL bands. Um, sorry. 
you know, TBL projects, which is the name of the other table, variance is greater than and equal to TBL bands uh, and then from. Okay, so it's going to be greater than equal to from. And so we're going to put two ampersands next to it. We will have TBL projects again and the variance, which is the name of that field, is less than or equal to TBL bands. And then I have two. It's another field there. Okay. So, yep, I think that's about it there. So what I'm just going to do is close off my bracket for the filter and then close off my bracket for the calculate function and press enter. And hey, presto, now we can see that these are banded with the zeros being zero, these numbers here and these numbers here uh, as well. That's fantastic. So we can start seeing the numbers working out there. So if you now want to see that in a visualization, which of course you do, otherwise you wouldn't be using Power BI, we can then go to our visualizations here at the top. And let's say I'm interested in a donut chart. So just move myself down out the way here. And now I'm interested in values. So I want to know uh, the cost uh, or maybe how many projects. I don't know here. We can change this here. We're in a particular band. Let's drag the band in the um, legendary, I believe there. And let's drag the cost into the values. Uh, and then we can start seeing uh, our cost there by band. So how many were in this, how many were in this uh, as well. Uh, maybe I can count or change this to a count function here. So I get much more of a dis um, distinct value there. So I hope this has helped. Uh, just as a recap, just go back to the function. So if I click on the band function here at the top, um, what I'm just going to just just bring that down a little bit. So just to zoom in, a little bit. So the calculate function is the function that we've used to run this filter to do this banding. The calculate function forms its own relationship. So we don't need to forge relationships with the calculate function. So it's fantastic in this regard. Then after that, if I just clear that one here, we have the values. The reason we put, have to put the values in is because the calculate function expects a table. It expects a table in result. If we just typed in TBL bands, and then band in there without the values in there, it will throw an error because it's not what it's expecting there. That's great. So just moving along a little bit more, then we've got the filter bit. So this is a nice function called filter. Uh, and then we're going to filter TBL bands. Remember, we're doing this for each row. How are we filtering this one? Well, depending on the table uh, project's variance. So if the table project's variance is greater than and equal to the table bands from, so do you remember from the Excel spreadsheet there, from the lower number, and then later on, if we move across, it leave a little bit more. Uh, oops, sorry, let me just zoom in a bit. Uh, that's it. And then this part of this one here is, is making sure the table project's variance is less variance is less than or equal to the two one that we've got there. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I will create the banding table and provide that for you. You can see that on the computer tutoring website as well. Um, so hopefully that'll help you group by values. Now it is true that uh, in preparing this video, I could notice that there's a lot of different things that you can do here. For instance, you could go to the variance over on this right hand side, look on the drop down list here and click on new group on the right hand side. If I just move myself out of the way here and just zoom in so you can see. So you can click on this new group button. But this new group button, it's another way of doing this one here. But the problem again with this is that you're just doing it in this Power BI file is, is only this one. So when you go to the variance of bins, you can do a minimum and maximum value, but you can't do the grouping. So you might say, I tell you what, I'll do the list in here and I'll start grouping it by these numbers here. And I can group, but again, you're grouping by data that you're selecting. So what happens if you get another lot of data in here? Or what happens, say, for instance, if you want to use that spreadsheet with the banding and those formulas there with many other different types of Power BI visualizations, it then becomes a little bit more difficult. So I admit, admit that sometimes looking at this function might be a little bit, oh, but take your time. I'll provide the function on the Dup Computer Tutoring website, so please visit uh, if you need to. Thank you so much for watching.